hello everyone i hope you all are doing good so in this particular video we're gonna take a look at how we're gonna configure the ntp okay the network time protocol so this is a mandatory part which will be used in order for the ic installation okay doesn't matter whatever version of ic you want to install but ntp has to be there so that your eyes can synchronize it to it. If you are using any kind of public IP, you can also use a public NTP server, not a problem. But if you are installing your eyes as a local deployment into your workstation or into your server, then it's mandatory that you have to provide local NTP server. It's always a best practice. Okay. Till the time you don't provide an NTP server, your installation will get failed and it will never gonna move ahead. So let's create an NTP server. So yesterday we have created the Active Directory and the DNS into the same itself Windows server. You can see over there, if I open up my local server, these are the configuration you have. The workgroup, workgroup is cisco.com. Domain firewall, you can turn it on, you can turn it off. Remote desktop services are being enabled. I have given an IP 192.168.38.150 in the last video. So now we're gonna make this as an NTP server. For that, what you need to do is right click, go to run and type regedit. Over here, now I'm gonna navigate myself. Let me just get this a little bit bigger. Okay. Inside your HK local machine, under the system, then go to current control set. Okay, over that this segment. Then from here, you have multiple services out there with respect to the windows, like your app ID, okay, your async, your audio profiles, okay, everything you have. And when you're gonna come down, you'll see a service that starts with W called as, where it is, here you go. So we have the W32 time. So this is the server, <clears throat> this is the service, I would say, which is responsible in order to do the NTP configuration. Okay. Now, Windows time service, it is being called as. So from here, we're gonna start configuring the different options you have under the config, under the parameters, uh, under the security, under the time providers. We'll take one by one each of them. First of all, I'll, I'm going to go into the parameters. Okay. In this, what I'm looking for, I'm looking for something called as your NTP server. First of all, type. What is my type? I'm creating a NTP server. I'm making this machine as an NTP server. So I'm going to edit this and I'm going to write NTP over there. Click on OK. Done. Now, change number two. I'm going to go to the NTP server over here now, whatever the ntp server you want to choose it because your pc need a reachability when you are making your local machine as an ntp server you need a reachability towards the internet so that your local server can integrate or can resync itself with the public ntp servers which are available okay. you can use the time.windows.com as well you can use time google.com as well not a problem whatever you feel like you can use there are multiple time servers which are available and change the value to 0x1 it will help to do the synchronization in less time okay the number of stratums will be less over there and click on okay done next after that we're gonna go into the config in the config you have multiple options out there again First of all, check the announce flag value. Okay. Change the decimal. If you are seeing this as 10, you need to change it to 5. Okay. It is basically for your authoritative time server that is being configured to use an announce flag. If you have not done the configuration of this, it's not going to synchronize with the upstream time server, whatever the time.google.com or type.windows.com. And it may not work properly or it may take time to do the synchronization. Okay. So set the announce flag to five. After that, what is the next step? 
max negative phase correction if you see the value inside decimal it's a huge value it's a time it's gonna take to resynchronize itself with the authoritative time server okay once you restart the services of ntp it takes little bit time to get synchronized that time will be le less if you change the value what should be the value it should be 1800 so basically it's a, you can say it's a number of second it's gonna wait in order to do the synchronization click on ok after that max post, post phase correction change the same value to 1800 back and click on ok done what else we need to change now go to the time providers under the time providers you can see ntp server is there right and it is enabled so the service is already being enabled so the will see the value of the enabled it's being given as one if it would be given as zero over here that means your service is not being enabled as of now but by default it's one so that means it is enabled done now what else so we have done the max negative phase correction we have done the max post phase correction okay so whatever the value you have given as 1800 that is called as time in seconds it's a placeholder for a reasonable value such as how many one hour is equals to 3600 okay as per if you go with respect to the second so 30 minutes is equal to 1800 the value is that so you are taking the minimum value as 30 minutes which is being required in order to do the integration with the authoritative time server whatever you have configured the value that you select will depend on the pole interval the network condition what is your speed what is your bandwidth it depends upon that as well the number of poles it's going to take to reach out to the authoritative time server that is being considered as well okay the default value of max post phase correction is around 48 hours. That means two days. We have boiled down the value to 30 minutes, which is a good value. Okay. Once this is being done, close this. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I need to restart the services. I can restart the services by going over there. If I go to services.msc, I'll get a Windows time service. You can see over there. What the service is called as W32 time. You can do the same configuration through the CLI if you want to do it. So I'm going to open my command prompt over there. Okay. By default, for the Windows server, your command prompt opens in an administrative service. If it's a Windows 10 and you need to make it as an NTP server, you have to first open your command prompt as an administrator level. W32 time. So I'll give the command net stop w32 time and net start w32 time. I've given two commands at once. This will help me to stop the service and again restart the service. So that means whatever the changes we have made, now it will come into the play. Okay. And I'm gonna click enter. Now the window service time service is being stopping and then starting again. Now there is a tool inside your CLI, inside your command prompt. The tool is being called as W32TM. This is the name of the tool. It's an executable based file which is being there uh, since server 2012, I suppose, where you can actually check that what is the NTP server which is being configured, is the server is running, what is the pole interval time, how much time it's gonna take to do the synchronization, is it active or not. If you want to resync the time uh, with respect to the authoritative time server, you can do that with this tool. Same thing I'm gonna do. W32 time. And I'm gonna create a query for that. That what is my source? And my source is time.google.com. That means I'm going good with the NTP services. My NTP server is time.google.com. Okay, which I configured it. Next w32 tm query and i want to know the status and you can see it's being synced at stratum level 2 the least the value of the stratum that means 
the more good your connection is and it have been synchronized as you can see the source is time.google.com poll interval 6 64 seconds last successful sync time is today just now it's happened And if you want to check that what is the peer value, peer time.google.com from where it is getting synchronized. Status is active. My current status is active. All good. That means my time server is working perfectly fine. And now this particular server, Windows server, is being configured. This IP 192.168.38.150 is being configured for the ADDNS and for the NTP okay in the next video we're gonna see that how we can make this Windows Server 2016 as a certificate authority as well as your FTP server okay so till the time stay tuned have a good day bye bye